There are so many things in the universe and in our daily lives that we don't understand. It's the job of science to help us solve the mysteries, a task that's not always easy. When the problem or the unexplained phenomenon has a surreal nature, it's tempting for some to ascribe to it mystical or supernatural properties. To assume it's a message from outer space, a distant galaxy, or a spiritual being. The Salisbury Downs, rich farming country that extends from the town of Salisbury over there to my left, past the ancient and mysterious monument of the Druids at Stonehenge, all the way to Yeovil out west. It's a region that's steeped in the history and the mythology of ancient England. And more recently, another mystery. The literally hundreds of circles and patterns that have appeared in the fields around here in the last year alone. At first, just simple circles, appearing overnight as swirls in the dew-covered barley, corn or vegetable fields. As many as five layers folded over in a pattern and surrounded by a wall of crop still standing and apparently unaffected. In some circles, the pattern or swirl of the crop altered, reversing after some days as if sucked up by a giant nocturnal vacuum cleaner and then gently laid back in the opposite direction. I've taken the inserts out of these two fountain pens. Then there were the electromagnetic changes, measured by circle spotters using dowsing sticks. I'm approaching the circle now, and on the edge of it, now, you see that reaction. Strange lights and power failures have been reported to accompany the arrival of the circles. And in the towns and villages, there was talk of UFOs. Then, in the late 70s, crop watchers noted a change. Not simple circles, but clusters of circles and forms carved with great precision. They called them pictograms, some evoking images of animals, symbols like Egyptian hieroglyphics, even the Celtic cross. Just as the scientific community was getting interested, and some of the brave were beginning to offer likely suggestions as to the cause of the phenomenon, a twist in events. You're looking at the two men that created them in 1978 and finished with them in 1991. That's all there is to it. Doug and Dave with the... Douglas Bauer and Dave Chorley, landscape painters from southern England, have admitted sneaking round the region, creating the circles, just for fun. As the world media watched, the old chums produced their scale drawing, a wooden plank, a ball of string and a baseball hat with a visor used as a sighting device. But veteran circle spotters Pat Delgado and Colin Andrews insist other still unexplained forces are at work. We've had uh, cider drinking, tractor drivers, uh, constructing them. We've had the British Army constructing them for us. We've had helicopters dropped into the field. We've inspected all of these uh, possibilities, but there is absolutely nothing yet. There's nobody in the world uh, can replicate the effects, uh, the symmetry uh, that we see in the genuine formations. These are the crystals. From in defense of their theories, the circle watchers say, Crop samples collected from affected fields show a different crystalline structure to controls. By examining crystals that form when plants are crushed and treated with various enzymes, plant biologists claim to be able to quantify the energy level of living matter. The theory owes more to philosophy than to science, but strangely, when plants from the circles and pictograms are treated using the method, there's a marked difference in their crystalline appearance. There's no doubt those cider-drinking tractor drivers from Yeovil had a hand in creating some of the circles. But there are other unexplained facts. The circles are not limited to southern England. They've been discovered in many countries, in the USA, in Turkey, Australia, and in the rice paddies of Japan. They can't all be a hoax. And what about those electromagnetic effects? Yeah. 
Why, for example, would this BBC film crew have noted major interference to their radio signals within a newly discovered crop circle? Just in the centre of the circle. This is the matter that gives so many clues. So many and there's this, circles in a brittle crop of oilseed rape. The hoax technique, demonstrated by the chaps from Chorley, would snap it off at the base. This crop is bent without breaking, as if it's been steamed. Uh, those plants were two metres high. So this is Or this, circles uh, within circles. Three circles uh, in forming an equilateral triangle and precisely positioned with respect to man-made features like the tractor tyre marks here and the nearby topography. You have here seven concentric rings here and 48 spokes actually formed by the growth pattern of the plants themselves. This strange growth pattern occurred weeks after the creation of the circle. So I think it's absolutely precise. Terence Meaden is the founder of the Tornado and Storm Research Organization. On Beyond 2000, we were introduced to a scientist who staked his reputation on a theory. A former lecturer in physics at Oxford, Terence Meaden throws out the crazy concepts for the plasma vortex theory. He explained how the land around southern England is perfect for the creation of mini whirlwinds or willy willies. The airflow in these meteorological vacuum cleaners can reverse, sometimes sucking and at other times blowing down to flatten the crop. He claims the smaller satellite circles are due to friction. Electrons are rubbed off the atoms of dust and crop debris. The ionization process leads to charged particles, which are expelled to Earth and lose their charge when they reach the crop, creating the bizarre patterns. Now, this theory of the vortices, on the surface it seems like the most logical one. Look behind me, the gentle rolling hills. You can imagine on a still night, calm air, a sea breeze blowing over the hills, creating the vortice, which then presses down onto the, the field of corn or whatever and creates the circle. But there are problems with the theory because when you look at the meteorological data that was collected over the last 12 months in this region, it simply doesn't add up. An extension of the ionised willy-willy theory is this work from Japan. Simon Reeve introduced us recently to these plasma fireballs created by Professor Yoshihiko Otsuki. By zapping huge amounts of microwave energy through ambient air, the professor has been able to demonstrate how fireballs can pass across a ceramic plate and how fireballs that touch down on an aluminium-covered tray create, yep, you guessed it, circles, touchdown circles, complete with their own satellites. The problem with the Japanese contribution to the circles debate is this. Huge amounts of energy are necessary to create the fireballs. So where does that leave us? Well, Salisbury is the centre for strategic research. Military establishments are at the perimeter of every farm, or so it seems. Could the circles and pictograms be a combination of ideal landscape, perfect meteorological conditions, and the steady hand of a military researcher aiming a pre-patterned laser or microwave weapon system at targets of corn? Well, I suppose it's possible. Something very important is obviously going on. And I would say, I would plead, frankly, after 10 years of intensive in investigation, stop the knocking. It's time to get on with the job. We need assistance. We need a very broad spectrum of expertise brought to bear. We need magnetometers brought in. We need an international effort, frankly, uh, such as the scale of the phenomenon. It does exist. We've proven it exists. There's an awful lot to look at here. Reverse flow wind tunnels, plasma fireballs, cosmic communication, Star Wars initiatives, or a sophisticated hoax. As yet, there are no simple answers, just more questions, theories, and an open mind.